So back for another update. Uh, it's Monday, and it's 7.42 a.m. here in Maryland. Now, I got a, some reactions from my last video, some comments, um, and I, I have been posting in, uh, or I said in my last two videos that I released, um, to like those videos if you enjoy or look forward to where I'm going with my trading, which is including crypto trading, uh, cryptocurrency trading, and also uh, forex trading. Uh, now, my last video got some mixed reactions with that uh, because that video was mostly focused on getting involved in crypto, crypto trading. And I've decided that I'm going to do mostly forex trading since this is how this video series or, or video diary kind of originally started was covering forex trading um, entirely. And so I don't want to, uh, you know, shun those that originally started watching my series because it was something different. So I want to keep uh, the video series a bit a bit focused uh, on currency or for the foreign exchange market. So here is my current trade that I'm in right now. This is on the NCD CAD and. I still have my $1,184 in this account, which is very small, uh, but uh, this is the inside candle, um, which I, I think is a really nice nice place for that. It is still near the round number. Uh, I would say that <clears throat> if it's anywhere from 20 to maybe even 30 pips from the round number, uh, that there should be still some of this action that goes on. Uh, so up and down a small tight range until uh, the pair decides which way it's going to go. Is it going to you know, pop up or is it going to pop down? Uh, but it will range a lot of times around the, that round number uh, anywhere from you know 10 to 30 pips uh, before that decision is actually made. Um, and so right now we're in kind of a ranging zone where I think it could pop up and down before it really goes somewhere. And, but we'll see. Right now I'm in I'm in profit, uh, not not too much, just about 10 pips profit uh, on this current trade. I'm looking for $10 on this specific uh, basket. Well, it's only one trade, so uh, but on on this on this trade itself, uh, if it pops up, then I'll enter on a grid of 20 pips and um, hope to get the next pullback. All right, so Robert's account still being traded, and this is what the, the same trade is in, just removing the grid. You can see that, that we had the entry on both brokers, so there's the inside candle set up there, and a nice, nice run up too, before the inside candle actually uh, took place. There was one here, right at the end of the session on Friday, but I believe that the spread was too high to actually take it, um, which I'm not uh, too uh, 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 disappointed about um, because it wouldn't have taken profit. There was a bit of a push right before the end of the session uh, in the, like the last few minutes, but it was only 20 pips. Uh, so this is a much better entry for, uh, for this trade. All right, so 114,000 here, 1,000, just over 1,000 in my uh, personal account at the moment, and uh, just a, a quick update on my uh, crypto trading. Um, right now, my account is looking at a $3,000 um, balance uh, from 800. Uh, so I, I was originally started with $800, and now it's 3,000. Uh, so things are going very well. Um, so far, all the calls that I've made have gone up very, fairly quickly. Uh, the one that I made recently, which was on uh, the Ethland, so it's Ethland, um, is a type of uh, cryptocurrency that allows peer-to-peer -peer lending. And if you guys know Lending Club, um, places like that, that offer a much lower um, interest rate for those that are borrowing. Um, and it's a decentralized way to lend money uh, and with uh, cryptocurrency. So it's a really cool uh, type of idea, and uh, they have their own coin to go along with that. 
and I was in at four cents, and it's currently seven, uh, but it went up to a high of about nine cents, um, which actually put my account at 4,000 at that, at that peak. Um, so I'm looking to get to uh, pretty much recover my big loss that I had. Uh, I, I lost about $20,000 uh, back about a, a three weeks to a month ago, and I've been looking for ways to gradually increase or to um, make that uh, loss back either in the Forex market or in uh, cryptocurrency trading. And I found that uh, making it back in, in, in the cryptocurrency market at the moment is a, a much better option. Um, as you can see right now, 800 into 3000 is so far going very well. All right, so back to uh, Forex trading. Um, I hope to push those profits from current, uh, cryptocurrency into uh, this account here at uh, Trader's Way, and it could take some time. I need the I need this pair or this uh, crypto to go to about 50 or so cents um, to make about $25,000. I know that's kind of a, a tall order, um, but this cryptocurrency has moved from two cents to seven cents in the last week. Um, so that is already a very good start. And so I have very high hopes. And when you're looking at cryptocurrencies, you have to find one that really tries to change and make uh, what Bitcoin set out originally better. So uh, a cryptocurrency that's trying to push uh, the envelope uh, by uh, correcting and making things faster, better, um, or just has a great idea to begin with. All right, so I hope that I can get you know my twenty thousand back by making good good decisions on uh, or good choices uh, in the crypto market and in helping that to fund uh, my trading here at uh, Trader's Way. Now, if I do happen to hold on a little bit longer, I may move funds over to Oanda and open up a personal account at, at Oanda. That is if, if things go really well and I make end up making a $50,000 profit there, uh, then I will move to Oanda and, and go from there. Uh, so, you know, it's really early on. Uh, I think that it could take anywhere from uh, a couple weeks to, you know, six months for this uh, crypto profit to take place. That is if the cryptocurrency market as a whole doesn't just fail. Um, so, uh, you know, a lot of people still say it's a bubble. So we'll just have to wait and see. All right, so, <clears throat> so this is what my strategy looks like right now. Now I'm going to go over the settings of my uh, Forex uh, trading EA robot. And because a lot of people have been asking, uh, how, what are what are the settings that you use? And, now, and I have displayed these in the past of, of the settings, but I have made some pretty big changes recently um, to the expert advisor because I finally worked out the discrepancies in my testing, which is uh, so nice uh, to have. And so I can really see how this robot's going to pan out over time, or I have a better idea of that. Um, so right now I have it testing on the uh, pound Canadian dollar just to show you what it looks like. Now I'm still trading on the pound CAD with on the M30. Uh, and the settings for the pound CAD are now listen up and you can plot you can probably redo uh, or replay this. Uh, but the settings that I like the most are 35 and 65 for the RMI. So that's uh, 65 for oversold, 35 for um, uh, sorry, oh, yeah, overbought, 65 for overbought, and 35 for oversold. And that is basically the filter for uh, taking inside inside candles. So uh, an inside candle here, make sure that the uh, RMI is 35, uh, below the 35, and you'll enter the um, market after a uh, inside candle. And so that is a good filter for a push, a potential pullback in the market. So using that combination. Uh, so the pound CAD uses 65 and 35. And you know, there are other settings that work. That's just what I found that works works best in the longer term. There are settings that work um, for the mid medium term, uh, for the short term, 
uh, and they can potentially bring in more profit. I don't know if this is absolutely the best setting that's that's out there, um, but it has been working for me. All right, so the Aussie CAD. Now this one is uh, a little bit different, and that's 25 and 85, uh, and so that's a, a pretty a, wide, a, a much wider range than the uh, the pound Canadian dollar, and uh, so the 85 for overbought, 25 for oversold, and uh, so you'll enter much later and take fewer trades than the pound uh, the pound CAD as well, uh, but the uh, typical basket size is much smaller on the Aussie CAD and New Zealand CAD as well. Uh, in New Zealand CAD, it's the same thing, uh, 80, uh, 25 and 85. And I've found those settings to be uh, the, the best at the moment. And they do bring in uh, no losses, actually, uh, from 2010 um, all the way to current date, uh, December of uh, 2017. Now, the drawdown potential uh, for uh, for the pound CAD uh, can be somewhat high, um, and it's it's the highest one out of out of the bunch. Uh, I did testing at uh, Oanda and found that the Aussie CAD and the New Zealand CAD actually only they only gave me uh, about uh, 10 to 15 uh, percent drawdown at the at their maximum, uh, while bringing in about a percent or two percent one to two percent per month. The pound cat is the is the big trading pair. Yes, it does bring a little higher uh, drawdown potential. When I did test at Oanda, it was uh, much smaller. Uh, uh, sorry, much much larger in drawdown. It was about 18, seven, uh, about 17 to 18 percent drawdown, uh, but the profit was two to three percent. So, what I'm looking at here is a potential gain each month of a maximum. Of about five percent, which is which is quite good considering being under twenty percent drawdown at pretty much all times. So uh, that's what I've seen over the last ten years using the strategy. Now, people have been asking me also, is this strategy tradable uh, manually? It is. It's a little bit harder because you do have to enter on on a grid, which you can do by placing pending orders. Uh, but I, you can't really. Um, utilize everything because I have a filter on my expert advisor that allows one trade per bar so if things are becoming very volatile like in this area where candles the candles are large um, I don't want multiple uh, trades in one candle uh, because that uh, the if the volatility is really high that means that uh, the market's really pushing heavily in one direction and um, I don't want a bunch of unnecessary trades. I want to wait for the price to start slowing down um, and the volatility to slow down because once that happens, it's more likely that the price will eventually turn around and head back down. Um, and so that's another filter that I've come up with uh, to help with, uh, with potential volatility spikes. People are always saying, oh, you, what happens if, if there's like a massive crash where are you where the price goes a thousand pips? Well, then I'm only going to have one trade that goes in on that one candle, uh, and most likely we'll still be okay when it comes to uh, trading uh, with a, a, a spike with a spike that goes against me. Um, so that's how I've seen the, the the market work, and that's why that filter um, happens to. Uh, be so solid over the longer term because I think it does help with those potential spikes. All right, so 40% uh, drawdown uh, on this on this pair. This is with settings of four to six uh, percent per month, just on on this pair. I'm actually going to turn that down because um, this is actually yeah this is the settings that I'm using on my account. Uh, so. 40% drawdown is about the highest I think that I could expect, but most of the time it ranges anywhere from five to uh, ten percent. Uh, but there are are some spikes. Now the spikes that you can you maybe won't be able to tell in the test, but there's one right here. This was a higher drawdown. I think this is with the 40% that I was talking about. There's smaller ones right here and here, in this area. All where you see the little bumps means that there are, there was higher drawdown that happened. 
Uh, the most recent one was about 30%, which was right up in here. Um, but still, overall, very solid, and I can handle a 40% drawdown on this smaller account that you see here of $1,000. I'm, I'm prepared to handle a 40% drawdown, um, and Robert's account is, is ready to handle a 20% drawdown, meaning if 20% is hit, then we'll do a cutoff, and I, I will cut the, the for, for losses on the account and we'll start looking for other opportunities. Now, 20% 20, 20 hit is, is heavy on a uh, $14,000 account, but it's still something that we're going to just have to, to, to deal with because in the last seven or eight years now, 20% drawdown has not been hit, but that doesn't mean that it can't be hit in the past. And so I do have still have a 500 pip stop loss uh, on each position, uh, and I and that all and that uh, uh, drawdown percentage cutoff on top of that of 20%. Uh, so hopefully you know 20% isn't hit for a long time, but I do see it maybe happening sometime in the future because I don't I don't know you know prices are always constantly changing. Just because I did eight years of testing does not mean that price is going to stay within that eight year bracket because it, it is always changing and morphing into something different. Um, and so it's hard to really know what's going to, to happen in the future. And the best way to prepare for that is to see what's happened in the past and to try to gauge uh, what's happened in the past. And, um, and having an expert advisor like I do that can trade through even the most volatile of news events. And if I can have something that can trade through those events that have happened in the last eight years, then maybe, just maybe, it's possible that I can uh, have a good enough filter, an expert advisor that can trade news events that happen in the future, near future, and you know, years down the road. So that's my hope, and that's the, the best way I feel like I can gauge the market right now. And I'm hoping that uh, things continue to go well. Now, the recent, uh, the recent trades that I had were very interesting because I did show these in my previous videos where I took profit right there at the bottom, and I did believe that this uh, basket uh, or this the market uh, or this pair uh, would continue down downward. I was wrong, and I actually took out my trades at the exact, pretty much the exact time uh, before the reversal or continuation of the trend back up. And I did this by looking at the uh, M5 uh, with the inside candle. Uh, so I waited, waited, waited uh, with this pushing down and held on to my trades as long as I could uh, before I saw a, a potential reversal happening, uh, which was this inside candle. And that did actually take effect. It did, it did show that traders were looking at this area for a place for continuation of the trend. And that was the case on the Aussie CAD and on the New Zealand CAD. And I waited for the same type of situation on the Aussie CAD. And let me show you there where there was another inside candle right here. And I exited uh, at the same, pretty much the same spot um, on both pairs. And then that pushed up right after. So, I mean, you can say it's luck, you can say it's a little bit of skill, maybe, maybe a combination, um, but I was able to get out, and I was able to get out with a bit more profit on, on these trades uh, by squeezing a, a bit more out of them, um, because my profit would have probably been taken right about here, maybe a little bit earlier, um, so I had more than enough price action to actually close this trade out, uh, which was nice. Uh, but, you know, this is the kind of stuff that I'm looking for with my, with my trading is that's happened in the past where uh, I'll have a good amount of trades that, that go up, but this pullback always happens in some way uh, or form, allowing me to close out my trades. Now, I can't really say that this is a good basket because this is a lot of trades, right? And the drawdown was, was decently high, even though on Robert's account, uh, with my risk profile, this was still only a maximum of 3% drawdown. 
So this was, and this is not 30, it's 3% drawdown on all of these trades, including the Aussie CAD and the ones on the New Zealand CAD. That was only 3% drawdown. And I was able to come out with uh, about 0.5% profit, a little bit more uh, than that. Um, I know that 3% drawdown for 0.5% profit is not a huge uh, risk reward uh, or not a really great one, but it's I'm about protecting my account from losses, right? So I tried to find the best risk settings to allow trades to uh, move into their profit levels that I expect and that I've tested in the past. And sometimes that can take a while because we don't really know, absolutely know when price is going to make that reversal here at the peak and start heading back down. I mean, I can get some hints, like this inside candle here was a potential hint for that to push down. You know, and price sometimes doesn't follow what you expect it to do. And in this case, it kept writing up, writing up, and writing up until eventually it has, it just has to fall. Now, if you zoom out of this, you'll see that the reason why I expect this to um, fall or to have some kind of pullback, and I was having conversations with Rauer about this, is because from the beginning of the real big push, there wasn't a massive pullback. There, the largest one was right in here. Uh, it's about 60 or so pips, I believe. And there was this, another smaller one here. But from this point on, there was almost no pullbacks. And I believe that was a good 250 pips with no sus substantial pullbacks. And as you guys know, there, when, you know, when there's a price movement, there's got to be some kind of dip where people take profit in these areas, right? Sorry, I should move this out. So it's like you have these dips that happen and so so on and these are places in the market that I'm looking for for profit and I find them much easier to grasp than trend trading because in trend trading we don't know that this is going to continue up as much as it is um, but we do know that there are going to be places where people take profits or exit the market or get rid of their positions and that's when these when this happens and that's what I'm looking to to profit on Okay, uh, so looking back at my expert advisor, and I mean the test is almost done, but I'm going to go ahead and stop it for now. I mean, uh, or we can just have it go in the background. But you can see that this is a very smooth equity. I don't, I, I have a 500 pip stop loss still set on each trade, but because my my risk setting is at a profit setting of three, uh, of four to six uh, percent each month. That 500 pip stop loss is not is never is never hit in this test. Now you have a place right here, uh, and this is because I'm doing a control points test, um, where the take profit level is not quite as accurate. As you can see, the trades are are kind of being taken, uh, profits being taken, and kind of in a a messed up basket. They're supposed to be taken at the same time. Look more like hold on, let me let me clear the. They're supposed to look a little bit more like this, where they all close out right at the same area. Um, but the control points test is not quite as accurate with that, but it still shows where the trades closed out, even though they're maybe not as accurate, uh, and that's why you can't believe the, the profit setting here, uh, the, or the, the profit um, expectation, or what it's showing here. You can see that this strategy has a very, very good equity curve, but a, a an every ticks test is going to be need, need to be done to give you a better profit expectation um, of, of what the strategy can achieve when it comes to monthly gains. Um, but at least I can see how much the drawdown is and where uh, trades have taken profit and so on and so forth. Okay, so the this area right here is a new drawdown point. It did give us about 25% drawdown. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Here it is. So, you know, this looks kind of ridiculous, right? I know that it's, you know, it, it probably, a lot of you may be thinking, well, this this is so stupid. Why, why enter so many trades on against you at three almost 400 pips against you? You know, from trade one to trade two, and entering 20 pips lower, 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 until waiting for that reverse. I mean, there are places that they were close, 
you know, pullbacks here. There was a pullback one right here. Uh, but there wasn't anything substantial until this moment. And after such a, a big move down, you know, there's got to be some kind of, of larger correction. And that is what happened at this point. And I was able to close out. The strategy was able to close out in profit. And But still, even though it was 400 pips drawdown from the top order, it's still, I had a 500 pip stop loss on that order, and that still wasn't hit. It was still 100 pips away. And drawdown on my account at this point, so during the lowest point, was only 25% on this particular basket of trades. Um, not, not so bad, considering how many trades that are in and how much they were against you, 400 pips. But the cool thing is that even though this is a 400 pips against you, uh, I only need... In the bottom order, about 180 pips profit, uh, uh, 180 pips move. Um, so you can see that I don't need 400 pips in order to recover this, uh, you know, recover in profit. I only need 180 uh, because of the amount of orders that I have in. Now consider, remember that each order is the same uh, risk size. So in this case. Uh, I don't know if it says there it is uh, 0 0.58 and you can see that every single order is the same so this is not martingale a lot of people confuse multiple orders um, as martingale but it means martingale means that each order is doubled and this is not the case with this strategy and this the strategy just wouldn't work if it was a martingale unless I had incredibly incredibly low risk and a larger account so <clears throat> I can expect some baskets like this that happen every once in a while, but uh, as long as my risk profile is set to something that is is workable in the long term, I should be able to handle situations like this in, in the longer term. That's why I'm talking so much about this today, is to uh, is for you guys to look at your strategies and figure out what the best risk profile for uh, for them is. Okay, so I just hit. Uh, We'll come back to that in a second, what I'm talking about, but a 46% drawdown, okay? So this is a little bit larger of a drawdown, and 46 or 45% is is a little bit more substan substantial, but I'm still okay taking that kind of drawdown on a smaller account like this. Uh, but once the account gets larger, say, for example, I'm back up to my 20,000 mark, I'm not going to be taking 46% drawdown uh, or risk on this account. I'm going to be uh, probably turning that down to at least half. Uh, so something like 20% uh, or 22% drawdown uh, compared maximum drawdown compared to 45, and that's a that's a pretty big difference. So, um, so the larger my account gets, the more the lower the risk that I will take on the account. So here we go again, larger drawdown. A lot, a lot of pips, and this one moved 560 pips, which is interesting because I just, I just have this account. I don't, apparently, I don't have it on a, a cutoff, uh, a drawdown. I didn't do it in the settings, which is a little bit misleading. Uh, but this should have, this top order should have closed out. Actually, both these top orders uh, probably should have closed out for a loss at the bottom here. Uh, but the rest of them would have closed out in profit at this area. So small loss, but most of it would have been gained back in the actual basket itself. Um, so uh, I apologize for not having the 500 pips stop loss active. Uh, and there it is, 500 pips. And so let's turn this down to, well, all we have to do is just put in $3,000. Oh, I see what's happening here. So this setting is not quite right. So I'm, I'm starting the, the, the setting, the, the, the test with $2,000. Um, and the larger the account starting balance, the uh, less risk in, in this case with my, with my setting. So I'm doing one lot for, to, to start out uh, with the trading on a $2,000 account. But the increase, so uh, I also have compounding uh, in place as well. So the compounding, I want to make sure to do 2,000 instead of 1,000. So I was compounding at a much higher level, which was increasing the risk on the account. So not a very accurate test, 
<laughs> in, in my case, uh, although it still shows a good equity curve, there's some problems in the testing, and so I would have to restart it, and um, so you get a better uh, accurate representation of what the strategy can achieve. But this is the kind of stuff that you need to, to, do, to do on your own time, either create your own EAs or your own robots to um, work with the settings to see what works uh, better, uh, especially when it comes to compounding, because compounding is a huge asset in, in trading, um, but it also can be um, a, a massive uh, a, a disappointment, too, if it's too high. All right, uh, so let's see how our trade is doing. It's kind of just lingering, not a lot of a lot of action going on at the moment, and uh, no trades on the Aussie CAD right now as, as well, uh, and nothing on the Pound CAD. Okay, so not much to, to further to talk about. Uh, I wanted to talk about the strategy itself, the settings a little bit more, uh, so you guys have a better idea of what I'm using uh, and what has worked well for me. Now, what has changed, before I go, what has changed since before? Well, I'm back to using the pound cat on the M30, which is something I was using previously, but I changed it um, uh, back a couple months ago because of discrepancies in my test testing. Uh, but since I, I worked that out, uh, I'm back to the M30. It's really solid. Uh, and I have uh, added the NZD CAD, which is something that I've only added in the last couple of months as well. And uh, the settings are the same as the Aussie CAD. So uh, I'm using all these pairs together and have a, an expert advisor that's closing the trades out uh, in a dollar amount. So this is how each of the uh, pairs work together. So I have three pairs, and once they all hit profit of $275, all trades close out. It doesn't matter if there are two trades on the pound CAD five trades on the Aussie CAD and one trade on the NZD CAD, all of them will close out at the same time and I'll come out with a profitable profitable basket. That is a huge asset to the strategy. That is one key point uh, that makes the strategy so powerful is because each of the pairs can uh, trade and act independently but also together. And that's one huge thing that I've also found out on the uh, pound Canadian dollar. Now I'm using it on the M30, but uh, M30 time frame. But this pair in particular is acting on its own and together. It's because I'm having to take a different risk setting. Um, I'm, I've cut the risk down on the pound Canadian dollar to half of what, oh, that's my cat, uh, to half of what I'm using on the other pair. So you can see that this this trade is, is 0.55 uh, lots, right? Um, and uh, the pound CAD is using half of that. So I'm gonna be using um, 0.23 uh, lots on this, on this particular uh, account size. I think I've pushed that up slightly to uh, 0.30, uh, but it's still about half and it's what I feel is, is working best. Now I also have the pound Canadian dollar taking 50 pip profits uh, instead of using just this set profit setting to, on dollar amount. So this pair in particular is uh, taking profits of a 275 um, when all pairs together meet that profit, but it's also taking 50 pips as well. It's taking a 50 pip take profit, which you can see here, 50 pips, and so when 50 pips are hit on this individual pair by itself, trades will close out just on the pound Canadian dollar. Uh, so that is another huge asset to this and change to the strategy uh, that gives it a lot more uh, profitability, a lot more safety, uh, and something that I found that will work very well. Uh, now on Robert's account, before I go, these this big basket that I was mentioning about. Um, here on the Aussie CAD and the NZD CAD, it was a good stress stress test because I had a lot of trades in. Uh, let me see if I can count them real fast. One, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine on the Aussie CAD and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven on the NZD CAD. So that's a really large amount of trades for only three percent drawdown on the account. 
but it was good to show me that I had a lot of margin to work with. Well, still quite a bit, um, at least in my opinion. I had about 560 or 570 margin still left, so I had a lot of room um, to uh, if the trend continued against me. All right, guys, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover today. Um, and hopefully, you know, going back in the forex direction is what you uh, are are wanting from this video series. And it's it is going to be my focus because I'm just trading in the cryptocurrency market to make profits for my trading in forex. But that is my passion. That's that's where my experience really lies. Uh, and I want to continue with my expert advisor because I feel like it's really solid and it's something that's going to be a long-term career for me. Um, and I'm just looking to fund that with cryptocurrency trading because that is blowing up so much right now. All right. Until next time, I'll see you guys. Have a great week. And I don't know when my next video will be, uh, but uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed uh, what you saw today. And uh, hopefully I'll make more content soon. All right. See you. Bye.